Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I want to show you my latest progress on um, Come On, Come All, and um, apologize for getting ahead of myself. So I sat down this morning, and I'm sure you guys have all had this uh, experience where you start planning and organizing and trimming things with the intent to actually come back and do it a little bit later. And that was my plan, and I was planning on turning on the recorder when I was doing it, and I just went ahead and did it and didn't record it. So I want to share with you that I've made frames to go around um, each one of the panels that are the walls. And then I'm going to show you how I did this. And I'm also going to explain to you why I did this. I don't typically like doing this because it's very fussy, it takes a lot of time, <clears throat> and the results can vary <laughs> greatly. So each one of these is a half inch. And um, then the two long sides are just square at the end. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to square these two off, and then I'm going to show you how I miter my corner. Oop. Having trouble talking uh, to help to help you lay it down and get a good result. Okay, so just imagine that these are two squares, but rather than overlap it like that, I like this nice mitered look. So the two long sides are just square. So they go end to end. And then what I did is laid on the short piece and it just lays on top of your square edge. And then, then you get that mitered look and then you don't run the risk of having a gap. So each strip is a half inch wide. So what you're gonna do is you are going to lay this down and you're going to mark one half inch in and then you're gonna go from that mark to that corner. And I actually doubled up, so I would only have to cut each strip once. And you're gonna create that miter. And that's how I do it. Um, and I meant to show that to you in the first place, but I um, got so busy and drifted and <laughs> wasn't paying attention that I wasn't recording. <laughs> so I went ahead and did that for all six panels. So that's what I did. Why did I do it? The reason I did it was, and I've rethought this project a couple of different times. Each one of these panels is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I chose that size because then a four by six photo would fit here. So that all sounds great, right? The problem is when you do that, you can't take advantage of your 12 by 12 um, sheets and cut it into three strips of four, four, and four. So, um, to, in order to get back to being able to better utilize smaller strips in my 12 by 12s, I just put a half inch frame around it. So now I can take a 12 by 12, cut it in half at six, and then cut it um, three times to have a total of six four by six inch panels, which I can use to either trim down further and lay in here, or um, better utilize the space inside. So what I'm going to do on the inside is going to be a little bit smaller anyways because we have to close um, this circle or this hexagon. So that means we've got these hinge areas that we're going to have to stay away from. So anyways, that was my thought process. So uh, another way around all that nonsense is to make each one of these panels four by six just make them a quarter inch shorter and a quarter inch narrower and then each one of these would have been four by six so um there's pros and cons both ways that means you're going to have to trim every four by six photo down a little bit if you're working with a four by six in fact the first prototype i did was four by six um, and the other benefit of the four by six is you get more panels out of your 12 by 12 um, chipboard so i just wanted to walk you through that if anybody decides they want to make it four by six send me a note and i will give you modified cut dimensions for the lid that will fit over a four by six box uh, you can just send that to me in um I have to think, I'm sorry, in the notes in, um, or a comment in YouTube, and I will get that right out to you. Um, and I'll just cut and paste it and put it inside the, uh, the comment when I reply. Okay, so that's where we are now. So the other reason I like doing the frame is, 
I'm going to turn it sideways so you guys can get a look. <clears throat> it kind of unifies the whole box where, where you're adding this red in. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to hold it sideways and not push, push it in on itself, but you get this nice unified look. So I'm going to put some colorful, interesting things here, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to make it look like, um, like banners. And in fact, a couple of the um, ephemera cards, I think, would look really nice trimmed out to go in here, you know, um, like some of the tickets. And for example, I could trim him down, put him in here, and then that, that looks like an advertisement on the outside of the box. So there's several of these um, vertical ones that would do very nicely. Um, so I'm thinking about every other one having kind of like a little advertisement banner, and then the other one's just having um, a coordinating uh, designer. But I'll be back soon to cover some of them. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I pointed out in the last video that I am going to use this as um, a trim element. So I'm basically going to center it. This is one inch, and this is probably three quarters of an inch. You can rest it on the bottom. It'll show up better here on the red. Rest it on the bottom if you feel more comfortable with that, or you can center it. And it's hard because I'm looking side to side. You know what? I actually think I like it better on the bottom. So I'm going to rest it on the bottom, which will make it very easy to guide. Now the challenge with this is going to be the glue part because there's so many tiny tips that you need to make sure you hit with glue. <clears throat> Again, this is a graphic 45 die. This would also be a great place to use a spray adhesive if you, um, if you have it or a roller, just be careful because it's so thin and delicate, you might just wind up picking it up on your on your roller. I don't have either one. So I'm just gonna painstakingly use my tip and get glue everywhere. Also, if you um, have a sticker sheet, this would be a good, good place to use it. It's too hard to handle, so I'm gonna use my tweezers. Okay, I'm going to start on the red. I'm going to um, turn it toward me so I can see what I'm doing. And then when I'm finished, I will show you guys what it looks like. I might just drug it all over the place. So I got glue everywhere because I dropped it. This, um, the challenge here is I feel like I need a third hand. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but you guys will be fine. And I'm going to have this come around the corner and meet the next one. Okay, there we go. It looks like I need to get a little glue under there. I'm gonna use this little spatula. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on it and I'm gonna run it right under there. I love this thing because it is so flat. You can get it under things. And on the next one, I'll just make sure that I'm getting glue all the way on the bottom. Okay, I think that's gonna be pretty. This is gonna be a very pretty box. Okay, so now we're ready for our next piece. So you can see it's got this duplicate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you can either lay it over, and I think that's what I'll do. I'll just double it up right there so I know it's exactly lined up. Okay, then we're gonna repeat that process all the way around. I'm going to do this offline because it is going to take me a little bit of time to get glue everywhere. When I come back, I will show you that I've got all the sides covered. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and uh, I went ahead and finished my layout. So I'm going to tell you what I did. <clears throat> I had put these down, and I told you I was probably going to use put these down. What I decided to do on the frames is I did cut out three extra black ones per frame, and you can see that it's standing out a little bit from um, the surface, so it gives it kind of a popped uh, appearance, and I, it turned out really well. 
So the other thing I did was I went and fussy cut and cut out a whole bunch of little things to put in these frames. Now you could put photos here, but I gotta tell you, this is like one and a half. <laughs> Actually, it's not even one and a half. It's like one and three eighths by two. So it's very small. So you could scale down some photos and put them in there if you wanted to, but I fussy cut these um, from the ephemera cards. Most of them are from the small ephemera cards. This one in particular, is from the large ephemera card. So I was able to get enough of these to fill all my frames. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is just trim these down to fit and glue them in. And when I, when I get them to fit, they're gonna sink down a little bit so the frame will be standing up. Then I'm going to add these little titles. But again, I have to put it all together, put the lid on to make sure none of these are gonna interfere with frames. Not all of them, but um, Many of them came with their little titles that I cut off the top. Okay, so now I just need to look at the sequence. I know I don't want these two yellow dresses together. This is one of my favorites. So I think I'm going to put it on what would be the opening space. So this is one of the doors and then I'm not sure if you can see it. This is one of the doors and there's the other. So I think I like this will be on the right hand side. I don't really like this for the left hand side so maybe I'll put that there and then I have the carousel or these guys and I kind of like this just because from a color perspective it goes the best so the blues are in the middle and the yellows are going to be uh, around to the front makes sense okay now it looks like I need to cut do a little bit more trimming but I'm going to see first of all if I can tuck it in if it's uh small enough for me to scoot it over and tuck it without trimming it anymore. I don't think so. And I, oh, my arthritis is acting up something fierce, my thumb. Um, yeah, a little bit more. I inked the edges. And this is just trial and error until I get it where it fits just right. Hope everybody's doing well. So, I saw all your answers on Facebook, and yay, I'm glad you guys are excited about this. It's different. Um, this would also make a, a good um, merry-go-round. I was thinking of, you know, like a baby project. This would work out perfectly. Of course, I would do different frames, but I mean, put different elements in here. You could do frames that are a little bit more simple. You could even buy little frames to put here if you, if you don't have that die, but I really like um, the fancy scrolls. I think it kind of makes it. Okay. Here's our carousel. I think it's gonna fit. I'm gonna make it fit. <laughs> there we go, so there's one. What do you guys think? Yay! So I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer so you can see the frame is elevated and then the photo is pressed back down. It's on the same level. Um, it's actually one level below that, below the um, decorative paper. Okay, so there's one. Okay, I'm liking it. Just making sure this is where I want her. It needs a little bit more off the bottom. So when you use this die, what comes out of the center is this. So I just use this as my template to cut these out. So as expected, they're all just a little bit too big because I traced it, which gave, made them a little bit bigger. But I want it to fit snugly. So I'm gonna press it down with my tool as I go. You could do so much embellishing on this. Um, the, the theme itself sort of lends it to lots of bling. Okay, I just want to make sure my corners are all the way down. Okay, next. I think this one's just a little too tall.
gonna have to take a little off that corner. And I need to glue that down. You could just glue this the sides and slide something in. I didn't do that, I glued it down first. So I'm pressing, pressing it from the front back. That ought to do it. And if I had known what I was going to do, I might have, you know, put these all down together, but this is sort of design as you go. I would have potentially changed the sequence, put the frame down after this or glue it to the frame and then add the whole thing. Okay. Yep, that's going to fit as is. This is very wide, so I hope I'm staying um, in frame. I know I am right now, but as I go across, there's so much stuff on my desk, I struggle. Okay, I'm going to start curling these over so I can stay in frame. Perfect. I am using um, powder puff and mahogany. And of course my art glitter glue with a scrap perfect tip. If you're new here, those are kind of my go-to tools. If you um, click on the description, or if you go down to the description and click on show more, um, you'll see, first of all, a material list, which is the project list, and then just below that, commonly used staples like our cardstock and tags and stuff like that, glue, adhesives. I guess I should test this first. Um, and then below that, you will find the cut list for this project. And that's the way all the projects are set up. So once you get used to it, you'll find that information the same place on all the videos. Now, if you're new, the way we sort our videos is we set up a playlist and it'll have the, um, the paper collection name. In this case, it'll become One Come All. And um, if you find that playlist, if you click on Show All, um, it'll display all the videos um, that are part of this project. So if you follow all the videos, you'll wind up with this a completed project just like this one. Okay, so there we go. Let's run it across. So there we are. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come and add some of these beautiful little banners. Now what I haven't decided is whether or not I'm going to put any um, black cardstock behind them. So that's one. I think over here it says we've got some That's Incredible, Extraordinary, kind of like that. This doesn't really go here. Lovely lady. We could put this here. That's incredible. It has to go with these guys. It doesn't really fit with anything else. And then I have just fussy cut a couple of uh, small things out from um, uh, one of the collection papers, um, trying to decide if I want to add more or less. I don't necessarily think you need a label on each one of these, so I'm going to kind of think about where I'm going to put those and then also test it to see if I prefer it to be matted with black. And um, when I come back, I'll show you what I did. The other thing is I got to put it together and put the lid on to see how far, how much space I can work with so that it doesn't interfere with anything I layer on. So the other thing as I was cutting apart these ephemera cards, um, some of them had these flowers on it. So I went ahead and fussy cut those and I may um, put some of these on um, here or I may add them inside 
the book. I haven't decided. So in fact, this one is half of that flower. So I was thinking about actually attaching it. So you have this flower that's two levels, what's behind and what's on top. But I haven't, I haven't decided yet. I'm going to look around and see, see what I think. So that's it for now. When I get back, I'll show you where I put my, my labels. And then um, we're ready to do the inside of the book. And the inside is going to be really simple. We're going to have a page design, and we're going to repeat it six times. And of course, all of the designer paper will vary per for each part, but um, the flap design and pocket design will be the same for all. So I'll be back soon. We are very close to finishing this project.